Coraline and Kubo and the Two Strings are quite the films in plot, characters, music, and animation. In fact, many people would call them Lake's finest, which I would have to agree with. Coraline takes priority for me, of course, but I do end up liking Kubo and the Two Strings more and more each time I watch it. But already many people, including I, have noticed many similar themes and characters between the two movies, which led to the question, are Coraline and Kubo and the Two Strings related in some way? And after digging around in each movie for quite some time, I have found that there definitely is a connection, and it's a deep, dark, creepy, and chilling one. Ready for a theory? Hey everyone, it's CTO of the Theory Channel, and a mashup theory like this has been long in the making, but I feel like it's perfect for two movies like these. But let's just get started, and hopefully I don't have to say this, but spoilers for both Kubo and the Two Strings and Coraline. So as I pointed out in my first and only Kubo theory, there are many details that connect these two movies. Evil, magical women, paper objects and worlds, and the theme of eyes and the moon are in each of these films, which is why so many people who like Coraline like Kubo and the Two Strings and vice versa. But this isn't by accident or just a side effect of the movies being by the same animation studio. The movies have a true connection between characters and places. But to give some background first, Kubo and the Two Strings takes place in the Edo period of feudal Japan, which lasted from 1603 to roughly 1868. Meanwhile, Coraline is set in Ashland, Oregon in about 2009, even though much of the film might take place on another dimension. But regardless, it means that Kubo and the Two Strings takes place before Coraline, which implies that the events of Kubo and the Two Strings lead up to the events of Coraline. The only other theory on the internet that I saw before constructing my viewpoints was the fangirls, and I definitely like where she's going, but I think that a few points could be altered. So obviously the most similar characters in the two movies are the Beldam from Coraline and the sisters from Kubo and the Two Strings. The Beldam is an eyeless magical woman who takes children's eyes and eats their souls, while the sisters are two eyeless magical women who also take people's eyes and souls. The connection is clearly there. So is it possible that one of the sisters became the Beldam? Well, the sisters both die in Kubo and the Two Strings, or supposedly. The two sisters, Karasu and Washi, perish in different places and at different times. Karasu is killed by Kubo's mother in her monkey form on the ship, while Washi is killed by Kubo at Hanzo's fortress. But the most important thing here is the way that they die. Karasu is stabbed by Sword Unbreakable, one of the pieces of the special armor, while Kubo breaks two of the three strings on his Shamsian to defeat Washi later in the movie. But I always wondered, if Karasu died because she was stabbed, then why didn't Washi die when she took a sword to the chest? I mean, she literally gets up a few minutes later like nothing happened. And the only possible answer I see is that Karasu died because she was stabbed by one of the pieces of the magical armor, Sword Unbreakable, but the sword that Beetle threw was clearly not. After Washi is hit, the camera goes to Beetle, who's holding about three other swords in his hands, all black at the hilt, as opposed to the gold Sword Unbreakable. So that's why Washi didn't die when hit with a sword, but Karasu did. Or did she? Because look at how Washi was killed, and how the Moon King was changed into mortal form. Kubo uses his Shamsian for both, and the Moon King is turned into a human again in a matter of seconds, while Washi wasn't. All we see is her mask on the floor, but at least a few hours later because Kubo had passed out and it's daytime now. Which means that Washi might have gone through the exact transformation that the Moon King went under, and that she potentially became a human with no memories whatsoever. So there would have been plenty of time for her to leave Hanzo's fortress before Kubo woke up. Because someone who has no idea who or where they are is probably not going to stay in the same area for many hours. So if the Moon King and Washi both became mortals with no memories, then what happened to Karasu? Well, since Kubo's Shamsian essentially took the immortal and heavenly parts out of Washi and the Moon King, I think it did just the opposite for Karasu. By stabbing her with Sword Unbreakable, it took out anything mortal about her, like her physical body, and sent her up to the heavens as just an evil spirit or entity. And here's where Coraline is finally tied in. 
Karasu is now unable to come back down to Earth and is stuck in a pocket dimension like the heavens, where it's only ever nighttime, where she will be stuck forever and ever and ever. The Bell Dam, the Otherworld, nighttime, all falling perfectly into place. The Beldam has supposedly been seeking out children's souls since the mid-1800s, which is right before the end of the Edo period in Japan. Plus, if the other world is in fact in the heavens on a different dimension, then we have no idea how exactly time works on that dimension, as I explained in my latest Coraline theory. But there's still a whole other part to this. Assuming that Karasu's memory was wiped when she was stabbed by Sword Unbreakable, just like the Moon Kings and Washis were, we know that all Karasu, or the Beldam, would have are a few flashes from the past, like Hanzo had when his memories were taken. And adding on to the fangirl's theory now, her most vivid memory would probably be of trying to take a child's eye, because that's what Karasu was trying to do when she was stabbed on the ship. And of course, we see how the Beldam demonstrates exactly that, by taking the eyes and souls of children. But then why does the Beldam, or Karasu, try to earn the children's love so much? It's because even though she might not remember it clearly, she's subconsciously trying to fill the void left not by her dead son, but by her dead sister, Washi. The two of them were extremely close in their evil, twisted way, especially after their other sister, or Kubo's mother, turned against them. Karasu and Washi trained together, fought together, and even thought and talked in perfect unison, often finishing each other's sentences. But Karasu doesn't remember her sister because her memory was wiped, but she does feel the absence of her, along with maybe a few flashes, which is why the Beldam tries so much to get children to love her. Her most vivid memory is of taking eyes from a child like Kubo, which is why she draws in children and takes their eyes, replacing them with buttons, but also gets them to try and love and connect with her like her sister would have. And also, take a look at all of the similarities between Karasu and the Beldam. Both are eyeless, both are evil, both have power, both steal eyes, both only live in darkness, both don't eat human food, and both don't need to sleep. That's seven crucial parallel details. But now to just clarify a few things, I know that this theory basically goes against all of my Coraline theories, as well as other Coraline theories, but it's not really supposed to line up with them. This is really just a possible side theory that connects Coraline and Kubo and the two strings. And as to how the Beldam eventually was able to take a spider-like form after becoming an entity, I'm not quite sure, but I'm definitely addressing just the Coraline aspect of it in the coming Coraline Part 4. But what I do think is that this theory has a lot of logical sense, and that it's pretty cool and fitting. It's perfect that Karasu became the Beldam, meaning that the Moon King is the Beldam's father, and that the other world is a pocket dimension in the heavens. The only part I don't love is that it still doesn't solve the true origin of the other mother, as we have no idea how the sisters came to be, besides the fact that they're the daughters of the Moon King. But anyway, expect some Studio Ghibli theories coming your way soon, and so yeah, see you then.